Welcome to Tammy's Soul Speak featuring animal intuitive and medium Tammy Hendricks, offering insight, spirituality, transformation, and clarity to every soul. Now, here's Tammy. Hi there. Happy Wednesday to you, wherever you are in the world. It's a beautiful day here in Asheville, North Carolina. The sun is shining finally. It was sort of a gray weekend because of the... I mean, I'm so sorry. We're not live. It's stuck. StreamYard is stuck. I don't know what's going on here. Rude. So we... <laughs> it is very rude. So we have to start over. It, it was the spinning wheel. <laughs> I'm like, I've never seen this before. <laughs> Let me um let me do something. <laughs> take two. <laughs> yeah, we're going into take two because this is the strangest thing. Well, interesting. Oh, now you're live. That's weird. Hi everyone. Here is Tammy. We had a very interesting start. StreamYard gave us a little hard time to start the show, but here you are. <laughs> That was too funny. <laughs> um, I'm glad you're here. It's a great Wednesday. Um, I love to start out things that uh, make me laugh. So this is pretty good that this comes in right now. We're live, not live, waiting, waiting to enter the room. You're like, ah, yeah, Tammy, you're in the room. <laughs> That's what the dogs do too. They're like, ah, yeah, come over here and we'll explain it to you. So I'm so glad to see everybody. So nice you're here. Um, oh, uh, hi, um, Kate. Kate, Tig, and Guido, yes, from Michigan. Um, and Claire, happy Wednesday. It's a blessing to be here again. It's a blessing to have you here always. I see you, Barb, too. Thank you. Hi, Patty. It's good to see you. And you've got a newbie in your life. I love that. And Dee, of course, well, you have a newbie, too. So there's a lot of uh, new ones coming in, right? Um, and it's an uh, interesting time. October is a very, very... You know, I've said this before, it's a transitional time and a lot of uh, movement. And if you just kind of eye October a little bit, it's kind of a preview for the next year. So whatever the themes are in October, uh, new beginnings, because it's a, the 10th month. So if you uh, narrow that down, it's a one, which is a beginning month. So just kind of pay attention and like, hmm, I wonder wonder if this is a preview. So that's always fun to watch. Um, hi, Mary. It's good to see you again. And Cindy, always, I'm so glad you're here. Oh, Lena, happy Wednesday to you too. Um, you know, it's always um, such a, a fun time when I, I get to create the show and the animals come in and, and it gets shuffled and reworked and, you know, up until the last minute even. Um, and it's just a a really interesting creative process is that animals shift and move and uh, say, no, I want to be part of it. And I really think this is important. So I really appreciate your joining in and uh, for a really fun topic, actually, it's a very interesting topic to me about, you know, animal antics and their behavior. And, it, you know, we, we see the behavior, but it can be, you know, across the map, like really, really funny, or it can be really, really intense and hard to work with. And um, I've experienced both. I'm sure you are too, if you have animals. Um, so what we're going to do today is just take a deep dive into behavior and what that might mean or what it looks like so that you can take that back in your own life and use it for people and animals. It's across the board helpful. So I love this quote by Maya Angelou. People will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. You know, I, I would translate that to the animals as the same is true for us and animals. We will forget the bad behaviors after a while and after a lifetime as we look back, but we will never forget how they made us feel. We always remember that piece and, and that's your connection into them, especially now and after they pass is that heart center, that feeling space, that that's your, that's your connecting thread. Um, oh, hi, Pamela. It's good to see you. Um, and Lena says she has rescue dogs and they like to connect energetically and like, yes, definitely. Um, so question, have you ever wondered why pets and people act the way they do? I mean, 
all we have to do is go out and observe things in the grocery store or on the in the street or what you know driving um and have you ever noticed the odd behaviors and wondered why they're doing them you know have you ever noticed your own behavior changing if something emotionally bothers you are you aware of that are you aware of what's underneath your own uh choices of behavior let's say oh nanette i am so glad you're here um Oh, <laughs> you are so, Vicki, it's so good to see you. Vicki has a, a, a little poodle that is doing some very interesting things. Um, hi, Joy. Um, you're having some tech, okay, tech issues, but slowly getting them straightened out. Yes, welcome to, you know, my world <laughs> um, <laughs> of the beginning of the show. So this should be very organic and we'll see where we head with this. Um, so I've always really been interested in behavior. I guess I did a lot of observing as a kid. And so I'd watch everybody and it'd be so interesting to see them talk. And yet I could feel underneath they weren't actually, it wasn't congruent with what they were feeling and what they were saying. So I guess this translated into, you know, what I do now with, um, you know, jumping underneath, not even jumping, it's just a sensing underneath of what's being said, what's, what's happening, observing the behavior. Um, so... And I think we probably, is behavior just behavior? It's random, it's out of context, it's just the way it is, or is there something deeper going on all the time? Um, so once you think about when you're in school and maybe a kid acted out and maybe you were, you were that kid, perhaps the kid got called to the principal's office, perhaps they got put in time out, or perhaps they got punished. If so, would there have been any value in trying to understand the deeper level before trying to fix or correct the behavior. I feel like so. It, it's not that we don't need to take steps, but it's more of a whole picture when we can understand underneath what's going on. So when I was in college, I would go home on weekends and my mother and I would sit on the couch in front of this big window and I would wail about things that had captured my emotional attention uh, with my friends, other students, professors, she would listen patiently until I was finished with my dramatic stories. They were very dramatic. The script would always include words that were said or behavior I didn't understand. And I felt very satisfied that I had reported these injustices to her, certain that I would hear a, oh, poor Tammy, somewhere in there. What happened instead <laughs> was that my mother would ask me questions causing me to look a little deeper, a little deeper to why things might have happened the way they did. She told me that seeing the behavior was the first step. Then she said most people see behavior and then they stop at that. They label it a certain way. It becomes a final kind of um, declaration. She said, but if I took another step to understand the possible reasons for the behavior, I would be able to have more compassion than I currently did. This always stuck with me. It was like one of the many, many moments I remember with her that I have carried with me in my life. And I'm so appreciative for all that, you know, all that uh, counseling she did during that time, because it really caused me to be like, oh, you mean there's something else that's maybe causing that behavior? Same is true, you know, for animals. Wouldn't it be easier if we didn't jump to conclusions maybe and immediately try to fix things? because of what we see with our eyes. Um, Kat says, yep, when I was questioned, it became clear my friend wouldn't do what I wanted to do. Yes, you know, um, when we've decided based on something that we think, a lot of times the animals who have free will and opinions are like, wait a minute, um, now look here, you didn't run this by me. So yeah, it's 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 always good to pause and uh, before we jump into fixing something, you know, what if we started out by understanding rather than correcting? Uh, what if we tried to see through the eyes of another and we made that a practice? So, you know, understanding and Renee, I think I've got that as a slide. Maybe understanding honors the whole being and I may not have it. There you go. I wanted to share that with you. Understanding, not labeling opens the doors to compassion. And I'm not saying it's easy. A lot of times it's not. And a lot of times we had to jump in 
uh, we have to jump in and, and fix the situation. If it's a, you know, you're on the front line, something's happening, absolutely do what you need to do. But what I'm suggesting is let's always try to back up to say, huh, I wonder why that happened or wonder why my dog or cat, uh, my pet is acting out the way they are, which is, I think from a lot of the questions you already are doing that and interpreting, you know, kind of what possibly it's about. So I want to share a story with you about Alex, um, who came to me many years ago. And Renee, if you would put up the, the photo of Alex, it's kind of go along with the story. Um, this is distinctly a story of behavior. So Alex in that right picture is the one closest to the, the camera. Um, in the one with two of them, <laughs> they almost look alike. Look at their tails. They're going the same way. Um, Alex is on the right. So you can see there's um, Alex and there's Mikey. So if you if you just share, let me share with you a minute, because I think this is going to be helpful in many of our cases when we really don't get what's going on. So it was November and very close to Thanksgiving as I made the drive to the animal shelter where I volunteered. Once there, I immediately noticed a large black lab huddled and shivering at the back of the cage. I did a double take for he was stunningly handsome with chiseled features and the most beautiful eyes I had ever seen. His coat was dingy and dull, which reflected a really hard life. Instinctively, I grabbed a leash and opened the gate. Watch out for that one. Don't trust him. He don't like no one, warned a worker who was passing by. I briefly looked up to acknowledge the warning, but this dog's eyes looked soft and gentle despite the fear I saw in them. I decided to take a risk and slip the leash over his head. Once outside, he relaxed slightly. He even played a little ball while he forgot his troubles. I reluctantly walked him back to the same cage where he immediately moved toward the back again, huddling. Our eyes met and I heard thanks as he literally nodded his head, tipping his nose down and then back up as he looked at me. It was very direct, very in intentional and quite moving. Over the next few days, I couldn't keep my encounter with him out of my thoughts. I kept recalling his demeanor, cautious yet gentle, spirited yet respectful, direct yet shy. His eyes, windows to his soul, revealed a depth of awareness and character that could easily be overlooked. After all, he was just another black dog. I realized I had a deep connection to him, even though we had just met. Two days later, right before Thanksgiving, I adopted him and Alex began his new life. But he had a lot of detoxing to do, both physically and emotionally, and it took him quite some time before he could sleep with both eyes shut. His nervous system stayed stuck in high gear. He would jump at the slightest noise and startle easily from sleep, growling and jumping on all fours with his hair raised. Alex needed his greatest issue to overcome was that of needing space. Alex couldn't bear feeling trapped or closed in. But over time, he grew relaxed with the other dogs in our family, and they were a ragtag bunch of labs and golden retrievers, all of whom had checkered pasts. Being lighthearted didn't come easily to Alex, so he always kept his space from any roughhousing that went on in the group, and they kept a respectful distance from him as well. Because of this, he became a loner, taking long walks by himself, and I always felt Alex had a lot of bottled up memories and emotions, ones that he kept tucked far away because they were too painful to feel. I wondered if his shadow side would erupt one day, triggered by something that had meaning only for Alex. Often I would remember that wor worker's warning. So I want to stop in the story to tell you, but Renee, leave them up if you would. Um, Alex definitely had triggers. And the space issue uh, was the, probably his biggest, biggest thing, because if he felt cornered, and it could be the slightest thing, like a, another dog walking by in his face, you could see his eyes, his eyes would change. And there was almost like another energy that would come into Alex. And so, you know, several times fights broke out because he would lash out and it would be so random, random and so fast um, that there was nothing I could do. But be on my feet, handle it, you know, do whatever I had to do. But it, it concerned me greatly. It, it, it made me wonder, you know, if he was ever going to be able to heal from this behavior of lashing out. And so as miracles happen with dogs, um, it was during this time that another dog joined us, a big energetic 
black lab we named Mikey. If Mikey had been a boy, you would have seen him sporting a baseball cap back backwards, looking like Bazooka Joe popping bubble gum. With his blocky lab head and athletic build, Mikey was larger than any of the dogs. Naturally friendly, he went right up to Alex and to introduce himself. A look of fear immediately entered Alex's eyes, and he backed up. It was a tense moment, and I wasn't sure I wasn't going to have to jump into a fray. Mikey completely ignored his behavior, and in what would become like a standard greeting, did a, like a paw shake, fist bump, pat on the back kind of move. And surprisingly, Alex didn't lash out or run and a friendship had begun. begun. And over the, the, you know, the time, they would walk on the property, take long walks together, and actually got quite creative in their behavior and healing. They would, on one night, I woke up to a terrible stench in the house. Um, I, you know, I went straight to the basement because that's where it was uh, leading me. And the smell was completely overpowering. And it was, I was almost choking. So Molly, who I've talked to you before about her mother, Molly, um, was standing at the dog door with a determined and very exasperated look on her face. Like it's about time. She grunted. I can't hold this door much longer. And I said, Molly, what's going on? And uh, I need to get outside. Where are the boys? She stared at me and didn't budge. And I heard some rustling outside. Excuse me. I said, as I wedged myself beside her and stuck my head out the dog door, um, move over. She grumbled. She stuck her head out too. So Alex and Mikey were on opposite sides with a live skunk in the middle. It was dark, but you could see their eyes glowing as they had stared each other down. Suddenly there was a scuffling followed by barks and Molly and I retreated inside. When we peeked again, Alex and Mikey were facing the dog door, waiting patiently to get back in. No skunk in sight. They stunk to high heaven. You know, probably the most incredible sight to witness was during Frisbee time, like that photo. And I would you know, take a big bucket of balls and Frisbees. They would line up like soldiers. One by one, I launched Frisbees in the air. And though each had their own Frisbee, Alex and Mikey would invariably end up running after the same one, each racing to catch it midair. And like choreographed dancers, they would leap in the air at the same time, catch it, and then race back side by side, holding a side of the Frisbee. It became their signature look, best friends, side by side. You know, I would say big, ma big, big magic happened to Alex in his lifetime because the behavior of lashing out and uh, the fear moves that he would do uh, softened over the years. And I did have him on uh, flower essences, which helped Alex tremendously. You know, so his beginnings as a street dog, rough and wary of anyone ready to pick a fight with him, to his life as a fun-loving, open-hearted, free spirit is what healing looks like. And, and I did have over the years when I would have to go to the vet for an issue that got created because of the fray that they would say, well, you need to do something with that dog. He needs to be euthanized. He needs to be. And I would I would listen and, and I would feel into that to see if that was actually what I felt. And I just had this sense that, you know, Alex could make some choices. And so to change on the outside, we must first change on the inside one step at a time. And I think that takes courage. So we have to make a, an inner decision to take the windows of opportunities to step through the doors that we're afraid of, you know, and to see what's on the other side. And so Alex's behavior, which was terrifying and scary, um, could have easily had him euthanized, could have easily labeled a behavior a certain way. You know, and every day clients ask me why their pets are doing crazy things or acting out in inappropriate ways. You know, behavior is a symptom of deeper emotions. Um, and Renee, if you would put this up, I think I've got a slide on that. It, it, it came to me to, to share it in this way. Behavior carries an energetic and emotional imprint, one you can always feel and sense always so what do we do when we don't understand behavior most often we judge it most often we we judge the behavior um that's a bad kid that's a bad dog that's a that's a crazy cat that's a whatever we call we label and declare something as such but, you know, with intuitive listening and animal behavior, 
it's a listening on a softer, broader level. The listening is on a much deeper level, the level where you can pick up energy, behavior patterns um, that can be discovered. And knowing Alex's entire life with me, I'm so glad that I had so much, you know, even all the dogs, you know, there was a cooperation with each other and, you know, Molly, Molly mothered them all and then would tattle on them. And so uh, it was very, it was a very beautiful way they all connected, even with the, the eruptions that uh, would be so intense and so fast and actually so scary. So if you want to, I, I'd like to put up a slide um, and want to share something, a story from a client who came and then I'm going to ask you some questions because I think this will be fun because this actually will maybe be something that you've experienced in your own life. So, Renee, if you would put up the cartoon, I'll give you a second to look at it. So this was um, literally uh, a, a Zoom session that I had with a mom and her two pets, Olivia and Barney. Uh, Olivia's on the the sofa you can see mom on the other side of the sofa like <laughs> and you know the the little frenchies up front like saying well, what what you know this is actually something that uh we talked about so it's all like they came to dr t's office and they they all had their like grievances and they were all like ready like i was with my mother to report everybody who had been mean to me and they're doing this and that and so Anyway, so she came and before I could, you know, I could feel the tension and the mom started talking and she said, Olivia won't stay off the couch. It's an extremely expensive couch. And I'm here to tell you, my husband is not happy about it. I looked over and they were all in the Zoom room so I could see everybody. I look over to see Olivia all but filing her nails, totally not caring what was said about her, almost like a, an eye roll. And she says, and don't get me started on Barney. Uh, she was very exasperated. Barney, she continued, peed on my shoes this morning, and it's just not acceptable. I looked over at Barney, and he was actually snoring in the corner, oblivious to the grievance being filed against him. So what I did is, is and, and, you know, as I'm doing things, I like to share this with you so you could do it in your own life. What I did is I listened to each story, each grievance, I could feel and hear underneath what they were, what that behavior was really saying. So if you want to play for a minute, I'd like to, to put this out so that you give this some thought yourself. So Renee, if you'd put the um, let's consider slide up, you know, if you're looking at the situation with the people that came, the, the animals that came, what's the energy of the behavior? that you think, and you know, you may want to just, if you have a pen and paper, as always, best to do that on my show. Um, you could put mom, Olivia, um, Barney, and then, you know, what's the energy of mom? What, what emotions does her behavior reveal? And what words would you use to describe it? Um, can you feel underneath the behavior to understand what might really be going on? If you don't mind, and you can take a minute or so, jot down something and share it with me in the comments because, um, you know, we all have intuitive ability and I'm so appreciative when you put things, you know, in the comments, you're so aware yourself. So let's do consider what is the energy of the mom, would you say, if you had to put a word to it, uh, Olivia, um, with her behavior of sitting on the sofa of Barney, who apparently decided to pee on her shoes. Um, understandably uh, a problem, right? We would all be like, Ooh, <laughs> like, what are you doing? Um, D says frustrated. D would you say all three of them are frustrated? Definitely. I, I think so too. Um, exasperated. Yep. Totally. Uh, energy of the mom. Kate says is impatient. Um, Mm -hmm. riled up, agitated, Claire says. Um, Kat says there's a shout for attention, but not for attention's sake. It's saying, please spend some quality time with me. And mom is oblivious and wasn't going to give the time and love they craved. Um, yep. 
definitely. Um, yeah, Lori says, mom is stressed and the dog and cat pick up on the stress. Uh, Martine, annoyance and irritation, blame the pet. I know. And I mean, it's easy when we're in our own lives to say, well, if this didn't happen, then we would all be fine. Stop the behavior, right? But there's always something under it, always. Um, Kate says they feel abandoned and left out. And Jeff said, mom just wasn't listening and getting frustrated because she doesn't understand. Um, yeah, I know. Um, that understanding piece, if, if we could all do anything, would be the very piece that's going to help us have more compassion because we stop judging. So Renee, if you'd put up the slide of, um, yes, Claire says, of notice the behavior, always a, thank you. <laughs> There's always a reason for the behavior on a soul level, Claire says, I totally agree. Um, so notice the behavior, but pay even more attention to the energy and emotions underneath. Have a curious mind to discover what's there. Have a don't know mind. Feel. Don't think. Get out of your head. Because <laughs> that's where the, the information is. And so, you know, I, I agree. And, uh, you know, I had written down some things for mom, you know, frustrated. She's overwhelmed. Feeling unheard. Did And, and the other piece was, did you pick up her um, concern about the husband? So a little concern there. I think Olivia was offended, you know, kind of miffed and confused as to why she couldn't sit on the sofa like you do. Um, and Barney, again, a lot of you, all of you have hit on this, misunderstood, needing attention. He's unsure kind of of his place in the family and a little concern for mom. Um, so Olivia's, you know, I'll, I'll go through and, you know, if we have a minute, if Olivia and Barney could talk, I mean, what would Olivia say? What would Barney say? If you want to throw something in the comments, I'll, I'll continue on, but they definitely, well, they, they can talk. Mm. <laughs> that was like tongue in cheek. If they can talk, they definitely can talk and they definitely have opinions. Um, Kat says almost like mom was afraid of what her husband would interpret their behavior as and po Yes. Possibly order them gone. Yes. Yes. Would all of you say there's tension in the room and it's not just the three of them? Was there a third energy in that room or a fourth energy, actually? And whose was it? It's their home as well as the humans. Yes. Yes. And animals see that. Um, Facebook. Yes. Barney just wants attention. Um, Kate says Olivia feels like she's a bit of a rebel reacting against being ignored and controlling mom. Oh, definitely. Yeah. She has. Olivia has airs. She definitely has airs um, and definitely opinionated. Um, Kate says she picks up that Barney has sadness and just wants attention. Um, there's definitely, definitely uh, that as well. Um, there's so many layers to this. Um, so, you know, when I was tuning in, Olivia's version to me was, you know, she couldn't understand why she was being shooed off the couch when it was a family couch. All the humans use it. Like she just didn't get it. Plus she felt important there and she could keep her eyes on things. That's an important piece to pay attention to um, because of that fourth energy in the room that we all felt. So Barney's version, interesting. He had been concerned for a while about the tension in the house as there had been some arguments and he wanted to get his mom's attention. But mostly, and a lot of you have hit on this, he wanted to hug her and feel that everything would be okay. So the solution we came up with, um, and this was definitely a, I mean, a negotiation. Um, after everyone had had a chance to speak and, and we were understanding really what was underneath all that. Um, so Doreen came, or, I mean, mom came up with, for Olivia, she agreed to designate a special chair just for Olivia, one that was covered with her favorite blanket if she would just stay off the couch. So we had to run that by Olivia. Like, would this be okay with you? Is this a win-win for everybody? You get to stay in the room. You get your own special throne. Olivia went for it. She really liked that one. She really liked that one. Um, and that seemed to settle her, which settled mom. Uh, which settled uh, the other energies in the room. For Barney, 
Um, she told him that she would take a moment every morning to hug and love him, giving him her full attention in return for no more shoe pee episodes. She also agree, agreed, and this is important to remember for your own animals, she agreed to include him in family discussions. Animals listen, just like children listen. And he'd been listening and he was very protective of mom and very concerned um, for this specific relationship. Um, Heather says listening to each other and feel each other out. Yes, it can be a problem, but the problem can be fixed if you take the time to listen to each with kindness. I agree. You know, if we listen with our hearts and we speak with our hearts, people and animals can hear us. It's very, very important to always remember that. Um, when we finished up the session, I could, Olivia was like giving me like a, a head nod and, um, Barney, he was like, I'm satisfied with these terms. <laughs> and so the energy totally changed in the room and they felt more like a family working together. So it was an energy of cooperation. Um, so I'm going to, since we're on the like cartoony role, I have a couple more for you just to play with. So, Renee, if you'd put up the one that says Home Sweet Home. So, again, another client, another situation. Here's, here's the scenario. Husband and wife are having a discussion in the room. They have two little dogs who live with them. Sometimes the discussions get heated. That's when the little dogs will suddenly start a game of hide and seek and chase where they zoom around and around the furniture, doing zoomies everywhere. The husband gets irritated. His attention immediately goes to what the dogs are doing. Question. What's the reason the dogs are doing this, do you think? What do you feel from them? And I'll let you, if you would, wouldn't mind, I'll be curious to see what you say in the comments. Um, and Jeff is sharing that, and humans need to learn that pets are just like people Yes, only they're, they have fur. I agree, no difference. There's no hierarchy. They are equal. Um, so what do you think those dogs are doing when they're ripping around all of a sudden? It's, it's really random, really random. And the person was just so perplexed why they were doing this. Um, D says heightened excitement from the tone of the voice. Okay. Um, they are anxious. They feel the tension. Um, ah, distraction. You all are heading in the right direction. They're intentionally trying to create a paradigm shift. They're distracting the humans from their state of being. Yeah. Um, Monica says the dogs are trying to divert attention from the argument. And Joyce says they feel the tension. Okay. Maybe even that the dogs are clearing the negative energy in the room. Yes. All of the above. You guys are great. Really. You, it, 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 that's why they're doing it all that they felt the tension they were trying to break the energy in the room. Um, they, and I've seen this with animals a lot. They will intentionally like, and I can even remember as a child doing this. If I heard an argument, I'd all of a sudden go in and ask for a drink because then they'd have to stop and come get me a drink. So that was just something intuitive. Animals do the same thing. Um, and they do get stressed and they vent their emotions. The dogs do get overwhelmed. I agree. The way it, animals move energy is to move just like we need to do. So if you ever feel stuck, if you ever feel like cramped, conflicted energy, get up and move, breathe out a window, get your keys and walk around. You know, car keys are all about moving. Even if you can't, it makes you feel better. Heather says the dogs feel the tensions so they're acting out, but you know, Heather, they're acting out in a way that they would say they're energy cleaners. I've had them, uh, have had them show me the images of scrubbing bubbles, you know, that uh, cartoony, what is that, Mr. Clean scrubbing? But anyway, you know what I'm talking about, little scrubbing bubbles where they clean up the energy in the room. It's amazing. And they can do that quite well. Um, so see it happen. Wolf packs when tensions, uh, Casca said, are getting too high. So they, so to speak, like inviting to play to reload the tension. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So all of you all are doing this naturally. You're softening your inner gaze and expanding your awareness. You notice the behavior, but you're also feeling the energy and emotions underneath. And if we did that all the time, wouldn't we respond differently, you think, to behavior? 
rather than calling it wrong or labeling it something. And think about the kids, think about the school and how they, this child is this way. And that, oh my goodness, it's such a, a practice uh, for, for life. Um, so I will give you another one. Um, this one's a little bit, so this, this person is saying this dog is out of control. Mom, she is jumping on me and going to knock me over. And then the dog saying, I love being close to people. Um, so Renee, if you keep that up. So I had this, uh, this is a recent reach out to me. I'm, this is from Karen. I'm not an expert by any means, but I believe this behavior is more from resource guarding, but the resource can be anything. She wants out the back door first and the other dog goes before her. So she bites. She wants a crumb if it falls from the table. And if another dog comes near, she bites. The one yesterday was that our youngest dog walked too close to the area of the yard she was in, so she bit his leg. The other day, she jumped up and tackled my toddler. She has never bitten a person and honestly just wants attention, but she has made it clear to other dogs not to go around her when there's something she wants. Even just sleeping on my son's bed, if she doesn't get on the bed first, She'll bite the other dogs if they try. My nine-year-old lab is terrified to be in the same room as her. You know, if you don't mind, when you know you feel into this, um, you know, what intuitive information are you picking up from the situation or the dog? Because this is a current situation, it's real life situation that m some of us may have experienced. And if you remember Alex, this kind of ties into how Alex would act too. It's very confusing and very frightening. Um, uh, Kate says it sounds like she wants to establish being dominant, the alpha. Yes, um, I would agree. Um, what's underneath that, Kate? Her her need to establish that. What's underneath it? There's something underneath it. A reason why she would need to do that. Uh, Claire says boundaries and respecting. Uh, them of both animals and humans. Cat says the dog is feeling incredibly vulnerable. The triggers that are causing the dog to be fearful of her place. Um, Tracy says the dog is frightened and strikes first. So would you say that underneath, um, yeah, can, and maybe she's insecure and thus gets defensive and goes on the, you know, goes on the attack, so to speak. Um and dachshunds are obsessed with food. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of dogs that are, and and it, it can be quite confusing. And uh, it's kind of like a, a juggling act to to handle. You know, one outcome from this in, in one scenario I could see with people saying they just they just get rid of the dog because that's that, that brings peace. And we are always looking for relief. Um, but always pay attention to space. You know, cats are in charge of spaces all over, but always pay attention to when an animal is, if you notice, uh, protecting their space. Um, if you think about it, we all have kind of our bubble of space, you know, it, it, it goes out from, you know, if we reach our hand out, that's kind of our bubble and it feels kind of uncomfortable when they come into our bubble. So in this case, she, like Alex, has... Uh, there's triggers in that. And it's something within her. It, it's actually not personal. Have y'all picked that up? It's not personal. In other words, it's, it could be anybody coming into their space. And so um, I'm, I'm curious, what would you recommend for her? Uh, how do we help this family? How do we help the dog? What can be done to um, soften the reactivity, you think? Wanda said, never been shown boundaries or feel to respect of her place. Uh, Janet says, acting from survival mode. Um, and Kat says, oh, she needs to protect. So she's like a bodyguard. She has to go first, test first, make sure everything is safe in the family. Um, Lena's questioning, did the dog have a trauma of losing someone or not being able to uh, hold on to something? You know, I don't know that uh, quite, Lena. Uh, I do feel myself just from the sharing of, of this person that um, 
there's a lot of the, the movement is an issue for the dog. Like it's too fast. It's not controlled and it triggers something. So there's very possibly an earlier trauma in there. Um, Kat suggests let the dog take the lead role as a bodyguard and let her be first responder. What do you guys think of giving them jobs, giving her a job? Do you think that would help? Um, and what would that be? Kat says, you know, letting her take the lead. Um, would you say more structures needed so that we all understand our places? Um, Tracy said, teach appropriate response and let's see. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and give a safe word, safe space. I like that. I, I like that. I think uh, uh, clarity is definitely needed here and a, uh, a not, you know, there's enough behavior here to where it's kind of a pattern. Would you agree? And there's a, a concern. I would be concerned too. How do we, how do we manage all these energies in the house, especially when one goes rogue, like Alex did. It, it was, a, it was a challenge that I kept trying to reach for. And um, especially toward the end of the life, I, you know, his life, he made, uh, I'll save this for another show. Let's just say Alex made a conscious decision not do something and he literally walked away and walked up the hill and chose not to intervene or or get triggered and from that day on he he didn't do anything else but he he made a conscious decision jeff says i get a i get a sense of loss like something being ripped away without her being able to do anything about it mm, that lack of control and she's trying to yet leading to her control issues she needs to know she's safe and that things are okay how do we do that how do we let them in this situation? How do we help her feel safe? Um, how do we make this a win-win for everybody so that it's a harmonious family again? Um, uh, Kate says maybe her role is second in command, uh, the protector with onerous alpha, but a gentle protector would be a con conversation with her. Yes, we need to definitely check in for her with her to see, well, you know, I get the sense with her, she's, uh, she's uncomfortable with her own behavior. Like she doesn't understand it herself. Um, uncomfortable in herself, kind of. Um, Kat says, yes, definitely set specific boundaries for her to be the first responder. And when it is inappropriate that everyone is safe during a certain circumstance. Yes, definitely. Um, thank you. I agree. Um, this is a team effort right? It's a team effort for all of us to understand each other. Uh, Martine says, give a task uh, and ask a common recall. Would structure help this dog, you think? Um, knowing exactly what her role is and her place. Um, and Lena says, acknowledge her concern and let her know it's not okay to behave by sending her to a safe place, at, such as a crater bed. Yeah, I mean, time out has its pluses. When I was in retail, I, I, can't tell you the number of times I felt like with with customers, maybe they should be putting time out <laughs> to calm down. Um, time out has a, a really it's helpful for me. You know, even when I'm like frantic and picking up frantic energy, I was like, whoa, time out. Go sit in a chair, Tammy. Um, uh, Kate is like, is it as simple as a conversation with uh, thank you with with she's loved regardless while the behavior is not ideal and needs to be changed? Um, like, yeah, I was, owe you, but not your, love you, but not your behavior. You know, it's with Alex, honestly, it wasn't just one conversation because he, that trigger was deep, deep within him. With this dog, I feel like it's a deeper, deeper issue. We can, we can make her safe and, and give her, you know, keep her away from certain things that she can't handle herself on. And a lot of times they're relieved when they don't have to be put in these situations, uh, I feel like if, if she's worked with and isn't allowed, you know, the biting is not appropriate. It's not fair. It's not fine for the nine-year-old lab to be traumatized and afraid in their own home. Um, it's that, none of that's okay. So we have to say, look, this is, this is non-negotiable. This is not okay. And if, you know, you see a trigger, then you can move them to the place where, like we said, time out until you get your stuff together. And then, you know, but always remember that when there's a, an issue, uh, and maybe it's a repeated issue with an animal and other animals or people, that energy stays in the room, by the way. So 
if you take a time out and then you put everybody back together, then the energy is still there. It's like if, if you on the road, if, if there's in your area, something that, uh, you know, cars are having accidents at this certain curve all the time, there's an energy there. It gets, it's an energy imprint. It gets created there. So that's another thing. The energy has to be shifted, uh, you know, transmuted and that's how we allow it but it takes a lot of patience and again it takes understanding and you know structure for everybody you know the karen included along with all the other beings that she's responsible for and her son you know tackling her toddler not cool not okay so um Adeline says, affirmations with the dog. I'm safe and my family is safe. I don't need to protect my dog's siblings. Um, they're strong enough to protect themselves. Acting as first responder is a trauma response, and she may not actually want, actually want to be that. I know. I get that sense, too. She's uncomfortable with the reaction, but she doesn't know how to stop it. Um, so it's helpful when we do uh, repeat things to them. We, we give assurances. I would definitely, for this one, especially recommend a flower essence just like I do with Alex it was so wonderful from Green Hope Farm Essences um and he was on one all of his life actually and to watch a being transform from that trauma reactivity to making conscious choices oh my goodness the 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 gifts that that we've offered them and and that they are able to offer themselves it allows their potential to come in um and Kat says, what assigning a role of a mediator that is always constant when there's an incident so the dog knows exactly what to expect. I'm a, I, yes, I'm thinking that would be mom. In my case, it was me. You know, I was, in, well, and Molly, when she was like, it's about time you got here. I'm trying to keep this door closed. They're bringing a skunk in. Um, so, yeah, I think that definitely, you know, whoever like holds the energy like I held the energy for all the animals and that's why it all worked beautifully. Even when it wasn't working beautifully, it was still transforming and, and transmuting. Um, but that doesn't mean you're not going to have challenges. So I like that. I like um, all the things that you've pointed out because it's obvious that you do this already. You know, you look into, into something rather than just at and call it wrong. And so if we can do that in our lives, my goodness, we honor all beings that cross our paths. Um, so keep, uh, I'm going to go to questions and comments feel or questions and, and the photos. Please feel free to keep commenting. If you have some things come up this, we, we definitely took a deep dive into all the behavior and sometimes it is funny behavior, like the little dog zooming. Uh, but it can be this other kind of like scary behavior. Like, oh, oh we got to, we got to get this, under control. And a lot of times the control piece, the structure piece is to uh, rehome. And I'm not saying that that's not appropriate in certain circumstances. It certainly is. My sense with Alex is that he was not able to, um, if I, it, where would I've rehomed him where he would be safe or others would be safe because nobody, nobody would have understand, stood that behavior that he was, I did because I could watch the, the, the transition in him and his eyes would, that's another thing, pay attention to their eyes, their, their eyes shift and a whole nother energy comes in if they're, and I would say with this dog, we just covered with Karen, um, I would definitely say another energy comes into the room and that's the trigger. It's kind of like when we get really upset and we lose it and they're like, wow, we don't usually do that. Wonder what came over me. It is that right there. It's that energy coming in. Um, uh, Julie says, what essence do you give to a dog with these issues? You know, <clears throat> I'd have to look at their site. I know in the past I've used uh, like an outburst one. They have that. They have an anxiety one. This dog definitely has anxiety. Um, there's also one about it, you know, abandonment, I think rescue and abandonment or something. It's, uh, it's, uh, it may be even a combination of things. I had, uh, there's one called Arbor Garden and um, there's another one I can't even remember the name of that. That one works really well with 
groups of animals to kind of peacefully get along. So anything you can do to like holistically support it as you are trying to correct the behavior um, and understand it and then take appropriate steps, that's, you know, that's going to be most helpful for everybody. Um, but yeah, I, it would be a, maybe a combo for, for this particular dog. Like I had Alex's on. Um, so Casca said a friend's pup, thank you, of 15 weeks called Hero recently passed away. He was very sick. I had a clear sense he would not make it, but also got a message where he said he would make it. So I guess you're confused about that. Maybe, um, a lot of times the way we interpret is interesting because when he said that he would make it, I'm not sure he meant it in the way you, you received it, if that makes sense. Uh, the way they look at the passing is very, very different than how we do. Very different. And they see uh, slipping in and out of life much more easily than we do. They understand that the, the passing is a beginning. And, you know, so um, sometimes it's easy to, to feel, and I think your clear sense of he wouldn't make it um, what was right. And he also may have been trying, on the other flip side of that, may have been trying to bolster up being strong for, for mom. Uh, I know Mikey did that to the very end of just not for me necessarily. He wanted to be with a group. And so we would have to carry him out and he would howl and carry on with them and, and then be quiet the rest of the day until he was ready to pass. And he actually told me one day, you know, he had, he felt complete. So um, I love that you, you picked that up and were abs able to just be present and, and be a space for him. Um, so Cindy says, I like the idea of giving a job. I use that with our retriever. She helps recycle um, and carries appropriate items to the laundry room for me. I love it. She, the, the way she struts when she is working is amazing. You ought to get video of that and share it. That's great. Um, so oh, Casca said he thought he would make it, but I knew he wouldn't. But like he was optimistic, as crude as it sounds, like a misjudgment. And also, too, like he's trying to continue on like normal. Um, definitely. So Renee, if you don't mind putting up some photos, I'd like you to share and help me with this. If you would, everybody, um, I always like you to see what I'm reading and see the photos and appreciate all questions and photos you send in. So Kimberly says, do dogs have a sense of humor? Sometimes my Layla does things, I think just to get my goat and make me laugh. I can't tell if she thinks my jokes are funny though. Oh, you two have such a, uh, it's a, it's a sweet, uh, connection with each other. She's, she's like a, a, a miniature laugh in. She says she's so funny and she's so, uh, happy that you think she's, she's funny and make, she can make you laugh. Um, she also says she does it at the exact time you need it and that you're always, uh, your energy changes. She says, when she makes you laugh. So maybe you can start paying attention to, this is a very deliberate choice she is making. And she is extremely pleased that she was able to help us all understand that yes, they do deliberately zoom around the room uh, to help us clear our energy. So thank you for uh, sharing that. And I do, she says that you do have funny jokes. She says she's teaching you about that. I just love her. That's an adorable picture. All right. Hey, Jennifer, this is Harry. He is an 11 and a half year old American Staffordshire Terrier. To me, he is a three year old child trapped in a dog's body. He loves to play with his jolly ball. During his 11 years on earth as Harry, AKA Pudge, he has mast cell tumors removed, one on his nose, two on his back, he has had two TPLO surgeries on both his knees and a rubber chunk from a bone surgically removed from his intestines. Thursday, October 6th, he goes in for a dental cleaning and possibly teeth removed because of bumps on his gums. I'm concerned for lots of reasons. Will he be okay? Does Harry have a message he wants me to know? Harry says he, when I'm tuned into him, he's like a tank. He says he's very much like a tank. And he says, tanks always go forward. So whereas you, you know, list all the things he's had. He's like, eh, 
no big deal. We got this. And so I think he's not going into the dental cleaning with any worry. He says he's actually a teacher dog for all of the, um, the vets, the, the vet techs. Um, he says that he's quite amazing and they're amazed by him. So um, I think if anything, the message would be for you to maybe try to downplay the concern and really believe in him that he can uh, be part of his own journey and healing uh, because he very much is. So maybe that'll help you that, you know, uh, Harry, just show me what you need and I'll be here to support whatever you're going through. We are, we are completely a team. That's how I would approach it. And he's, um, he is, he's a teacher, teacher soul. No question. Thank you for sharing that. This is Heather. Um, Hi, Tammy. As you know, you've seen picture of Birdie. Absolutely. Mm. I just want to know if she's okay and not in pain anymore. I do feel her presence in me, and I just want to know if she misses us. She was a powerhouse in our family, and my other family members miss her so much. Um, thanks so much, Heather. Oh, you know, Birdie, she was an incredible and is an incredible soul uh, she's showing me, she's like a big cloud, you know, just a big cloud that comes around and, and that soft kind of cloud, not, not cloud in the depressing sense, uh, soft. And, uh, she has a wisdom to her that she said that you and she have shared some wisdom talk, she said. So I don't quite know what she's referring to, but she says before she passed, especially, you two shared some special moments and uh, she's giving me the image of Molly when she was passing. I li literally got tutorials from her every day, like, and this and this and remember this. Um, so she's definitely very much with you and still uh, being supportive to you and the family. She's a, an, she's, she says she's an ongoing energy, an ongoing spirit. So don't ever doubt that, you know, she's there and she's so okay. Like she is ready to go. Let's continue on with each other. So if you haven't done this, I would definitely recommend including her in everything you do still. You know, if you're, I continued on calling Molly, calling uh, Murphy calling Katie. And I wasn't ashamed of it at all. I kept their beds. I, I kept their collars. I kept what was important um, because their energy is still there. And so what the best we, thing we can do when they've passed is to acknowledge that energy. It's not gone. It's not gone. So thank you for sharing. She's a beautiful soul and everybody can feel it as we look at those photos. This is Jolene. Hi, Jolene. Um, my daughter and her family had to move in with us, and that includes her four kids and their two dogs. My sweet, happy gunner has completely changed his personality. One of my daughter's dogs, Milo, won't even try to get along with gunner, and it's not gunner with him. We've tried everything that the trainer has said, but nothing works. Gunner is my huge comfort since my daughter is fighting breast cancer. Thank you. And this is a different daughter than the, the one who moved back in with me. Oh, you know, what I'm feeling from this is, is that Gunner is trying to um, balance himself. He's actually taking on the role of trying to balance all their uh, energies. Uh, and, and he can't. He doesn't. He's like the other one. He's speaking of Milo. Um, he, he's calling him a wild card. So... Uh, and he says he's disrupted the energy of the house tremendously. And he doesn't, he says he doesn't believe in picking fights. He doesn't pick fights. And he also says that his role with you is to keep you happy. And I remember you had reached out about smiling. He smiles when you smile. It's almost like I'm hearing that song and the whole world smiles with us, whatever that was. Um, that's his really sole purpose. And he wants to continue on in that. And so it's disturbing to him that the, the energy is not balanced. I would look to trying to uh, having them have their own spaces and being able to feel safe 
where they are. I think he doesn't feel safe right now. And I'm not sure how he's changed his personality, but I do get that sense of worry, concern, and an interruption in the balance of the household, which obviously I think you're, you're validating and saying, um, training has its value. It totally does. I think in this case, it's, it's kind of like the energy of the, the person, Karen, that there's so many different energies and Milo hasn't adapted or adopted this family. So you've got, you know, the original energy and then you've got your daughter and kids and dogs and there's a lot of energy in those rooms. So I would actually give Gunnar some space that's his own, that could be your special time that you share with him and that that's, that's yours. I think if, if you can do that, that'll help him balance his own feelings. And, and maybe in the meantime, you can set up some kind of situation where the dogs don't, it's, it's just not a free for all in other words. Um, so this is, it's not easy. It's not, it's more complicated. And, and I think it's really helpful for you to be trying to understand it. Um, and, you know, again, if, if any of you want to take this a step further, I do one-on-ones where we can really uh, open the space up for a lot of emotions, feelings, words, uh, everything to come through. And it's incredibly healing. So I hope this helps Jolene. Um, sending you lots of support for, for your family, your daughter. Um, and thank you so much for, for reaching out. I think we all appreciate this. You know, this is so amazing. Thank you for teaching all of us. Barbara says, even though I've worked as a vet tech and animal rescue, I still need confirmation of my animal communication. All of our four, four dogs are enjoying this very much. I am so glad. That makes me so happy because, you know, if we can take something we've learned back into our own lives and that actually uh, we're teaming up with the animals. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. What what gifts we've been given. So I appreciate you saying that and I appreciate you getting benefit. It's, it's, it just warms my heart. Well, all of you warm my heart and I'm so glad you're here today. Um, I can't wait to see you next time. And let's always, always keep the conversation going with everybody, animals, people. See you next time. You've been enjoying... Tammy's Soul Speak featuring animal intuitive and medium, Tammy Hendricks. 